Yeah, that sort of um that ideology at Newcastle, where like you said, it was they were very respectful of their opponents, but obviously they would go out and try and play their own game. They had their own philosophy. It seems to have eroded from the club over the years, and some people will say that's due to uh, an owner maybe that doesn't care. You know, if if I was only Newcastle United now, I would look back at those golden years and I'd be like, right, I want to replicate them. But it seems like Mike Ashley doesn't have any interest in it. I just wanted to get your take on his ownership. What do you think of Mike Ashley? Um, when I've been in his company, I was there when he first arrived. I was a coach there when he first arrived when Sam Allardyce was manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, socially, <laughs> he's a top fella. Um, <laughs> I've been in his company before down at Fulham when Newcastle played there and, and, yeah. and enjoyed being in his company socially. Is an owner, absolute garbage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, there's not, there's, 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 no, there's nothing more you can say. The club... Um, has no ambition uh, mm-hmm. as long as it stays in the Premier League. If you finish fourth bottom, he's a happy owner. Yeah. Uh, the infrastructure of the club is so far back from the other Premier League clubs. And when I talk about infrastructure, I don't mean St James's. It's fantastic arena. Everything's mm-hmm. fine, fine there. I mean the training facilities and this nonsense that they generally come out with about uh, oh, we're investing in the squad rather than the, the, the training facilities. Absolute rubbish. Um, it's not going to take mountains of money they have the two sites there for the first team in the academy. They just need to upgrade it. That was a huge frustration for Rafa Benitez. I know that. Uh, one thing he first, when he first arrived, he got the the an upgraded and up to date four G pitch for the academy, which is one of the stipulations for category one status. Mm. But that's the only thing that he could force through. I mean, the training facility, the first team, is exactly the same as when I was there. Just to tad new paintings put up new pictures <laughs> it's been a little bit but the, the structure of it I mean you go around the country and you're seeing um, you know, hydro pools recovery pools recovery baths cryo chambers um, you know people might say oh what's all this about but this is 21st century football this is when you're paying these commodities i.e. the players huge amounts of money you've got to protect them you've got to try and get them out on the pitch as safely as possible uh, in a very competitive league. And, you know, the facilities are huge. And, um, you know, Newcastle's facilities are so outdated, it's untrue. Um, you know, we've, we've probably got the third worst training ground in the northeast behind Middlesbrough and Sunderland. <laughs> uh, well, in fact, we're, we'll probably have, I said we'll probably have, well, in fact, we'll have. Yeah. There's no getting, there's two ways about it. So, um, and, uh, you know, the ambition, I think the players are looking for help. As I've just touched on before, mm. under the entertainers with Keegan, we we were inspired by when more new signings came in, better quality of players that drove yeah. us to become better. The players who were already there, I think the players that are currently in Newcastle now want to see better players come in. They want to see to drive them on, to also make them become better players. You become a better player when you play with better players. It's as simple as that. Um, and I think they're needing help. I think the run they've had at the end of the season shows that there's something there that can be worked on to finish in the position they did 12th. Great achievement. Not acceptable achievement, but great mm-hmm. achievement from where they were in the, in the group they've got. I think with a couple of proper additions in the summer that can prove, a, you know, that will prove costly, but that's the way the Premier League is. If you want to if you want to try and be competitive and, 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 and make inroads into the top 10 and then make, try and after that make inroads into the European competition positions, you have to, you have to spend a bit of money. And um, I know COVID's affected everybody. Mm. Um, but, you know, there, there has to be some kind of... And, and, and what happens is, um, you know, the, the, the anger and the frustration that's aimed at the owner then gets directed elsewhere, i.e. the manager. And sometimes mm-hmm. at the players. Um, and yes, I understand some of it. Steve's a good mate of mine. So I haven't enjoyed some of the stuff I've read or seen or heard about Steve um, at all. I've, I've really felt the pain for him, him and his family. Um, I understand the frustrations of the fans because some of the runs, the run, I think, with two wins and 22, was it at one stage? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, that, well, you know that's that's a horrendous run in anyone's eyes, and Steve knew, knew that he he realised that he was under pressure, and rightly so because of that type of run and the actual the players were performing. Mm. 
But I just think that, you know, there needs to be a bit of help there. There needs to be allowed to to bring in some quality. That, that There is the basis of some really quality players. But you see, when we lose those players, the, the Callum Wilsons and the St. Maxims, um, we still struggle. So there has to be some strength and depth. There has to be some quality to the squad. There has to be, we do need some help in midfield. Um, you know, and, the, and there's other areas of the starting eleven that could be improved. So, and listen, there's talk now. There's been in the last 48 hours. There's refresh talk that the takeover could be back on, could be imminent in the next month. It's fingers crossed because if there's someone can do that who has the funds to to, to put in place what I've just said. You know, you, 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 the, the the term and the old cliche is sleeping giant, but this this could awaken a sleeping giant and could uh, threaten the big threaten <laughs> the big six. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> if, if, they stay, if, if they stay in the English Premier League and the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> we'll come on to the big six in a minute, but uh, yeah, I wanted to build on what you said there. I mean, um, you know, with with Steve Bruce, I was I was interested to to get your your take on on the season like you said and and, and obviously you know on Steve Bruce as a whole and mm-hmm. uh, and obviously he's a friend of yours Steve and I know that um I know that Steve um Steve Bruce uh for all his players all the players seem seem to really buy into what he's doing they seem to they seem to like him as a manager um and that seems to be across the board there's a lot of players who agree with that statement and there's a lot of people in the media who agree with it as well um but uh, I think from I mean from the fans' perspective, I mean they've really really not taken to Steve Bruce at all. I think I think there was um there was a reluctance to accept him at first, and I think in order well, to do you know, do you know, can, I just, can I just interrupt you there? And this is I, I had a similar situation, but on a much lower scale mm. when I went in at Blackpool under the Oysters, and I immediately got tarred with. Uh, I was a puppet for Carl and Owen Oyston. Um, I was their man. I was I was a believer in what they were doing. The fans were at loggerheads with them, and rightly so, which I found out to me own detriment. Um, you know, further down the line after I accepted the job at Blackpool in the Championship, because uh, the infrastructure there was horrendous. It was mm-hmm. non-league. I mean, no, I'm being disrespectful to non-league. <laughs> you know the way the club was run. You know the way the club was run, etc. And um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a believer in in um, what the Oceans were doing. I was given an opportunity after being sacked in the Championship by Birmingham to to resume that role in the Championship with Blackpool. You need a massive ego as a as a manager. I, I had that, and what I believed with the four points from the first fourteen games that Blackpool had, that I still could keep them up. And if I kept them up, it would be the best thing I could ever put on my CV mm. because it was a, it was a it was a it was a nut job. But when I realised when I got in there, it was a bigger issue and bigger problems. But I the, the fans never ever took the was even from the first day because they believed up. Because I was appointed by the the Oysters, I was I was a believer in what they were doing. I was on their side, which was never the case. And I think on a bigger and higher profile, that that has been the thing with 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 Steve. Um, I, I mean, could I play devil's let devil's advocate with that one? I mean, uh, Rafa Benitez was appointed by the same group of people, and uh, and you know he was well received by the fans. And with regards to not that's, being... And that's, and that's another bone of contention with myself. I mean, Steve's been criticised by the standard of football, um, the type of football. I've got to say, under Rafa, there was some horrific games. Um, and remember, just before Christmas, my two old clubs, Newcastle mm. Fulham, cleared out a nil-nil. Um, I was at the game um, under Rafa's reign and it was probably up there with one of the worst Premier League games I'd ever seen and 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 Rafa was always and even at the big clubs he managed Real Madrid Chelsea Liverpool he always started off with a defensive side yeah there was the organisation mm. um, now what Rafa done and he done it well he played the media unbelievable against Mike without really having a go officially at Mike and that's what won him I think the fans um because to what what really frustrates me is Rafa's held in the same esteem as Bob Sir Bobby Robson and Kevin Keegan at the moment. I think I think and right so. achieved, and he, I think and he never achieved anything in comparison to what those two guys achieved. 
I, I, I agree with you in the, in the sense that he didn't achieve um, anything comparable to, to the legends of, of, that you named. But I think for Newcastle fans, it is, uh, such as yourself, Liam, and obviously you're a Newcastle fan as well. And, uh, and obviously, you know, your input is, is, is invaluable with this. But, um, I mean, it's about attitude, isn't it? It's about, it's about wanting more for the club. Um, and I, I think that, like you said, he's played, he's played the media well, Rafa. So, so do, you think, do, you think, do you think do you think, Steve Bruce just wants to finish fourth bottom? Do you think Steve wants that stress and the pressure? Do you think Steve wants the, the social media reaction against him and his family? No, it's, 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 it's a fair question. It's a fair question, Steve, yeah. was born, Steve was born on the banks of the time. Yes, you know, I get... I hear this stuff, oh, he's, a United, he's a Man United man. Well, ultimately, he was a Man United man because Newcastle United didn't come and buy him. And he went and played for the biggest club in the no, country at the time yeah, and won no, trophies. Yeah. That wasn't Steve's fault. Um, ultimately, he's got back, he's gotten a job that any Geordie involved in football would want. Now, listen, I've said some of the performances and results and the runs of results under Steve have been horrendous. And, you know... Probably lucky that he was working for Mike Ashley with a two and twenty-two run. Um, so yes. you know, this isn't me or Lee Clark sticking up for his pal Steve. No, this is me talking about Newcastle United. I, I'm not. I want whoever's the manager. I want us to win. I want us to win FA Cups or the leagues or get into Europe, be successful. You know, I I just think our club at the moment. You know, it, it winds me up how least appreciation the 1969 lads get. The first cup winners, the, you know, Joe Harvey, he's got a little, there's a bust of just his head around St. James's. He should, that man should have a statue. Should be up there with Sheeran and Milburn because he's, he, he, he captained the club to, to FA Cup wins. He, he, he took the club to the FA Cup final. He, he, he won the first cup. No man's done anything more than that man for the club. And there's a small bust at the, <coughs> at the Gallagher end for him. So, you know, it's 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 a balancing act. It's 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 trying to, you know, you say that, you know, Rafa had more uh, drive and more belief. Or, I don't know the exact words he used than probably Steve because he's, he's I've seen the words Steve's Mike Ashley's man and all that. You think Steve enjoys losing? You think Steve <clears throat> enjoys the, the stick and the pressure that comes with the job and he wants to finish fourth bottom? You not think Steve would love to be 10th, 8th, 6th, mm. just like Rafa would? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, my, my take on, on that is it's a completely fair point, Lee, Lee what you're saying. Um, and, and obviously what Rafa did is the football was poor for a long period of time under Rafa. And whether there was a mentality switch or whether the, you know, the feeling around the club was different, that's really not, not, not important. Um, I suppose the main criticism, I mean, I could, I could sit here, I could compare Steve Bruce to Rafa Benitez, but this chalk and cheese. Um, the main criticism I would have is Rafa Benitez never had the benefit of having about 150 million spent on the squad, and 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 Steve Bruce did that and got worse. Um, that is the main criticism that the, the Newcastle fans would have had of Steve Bruce and his appointment. Yes, he wasn't first. So when you first. say when you say it got worse in what way because they finished 12 performances, the performances, the performances. Right. Okay. So I mean, I, with, with Newcastle fans, yeah, there's there's the people who would say I would rather finish 17th and play great football than 18th. And play bad football. I don't, I don't agree with that necessarily. Um, but I think, well, do you know, uh, do you know, do you know the, the more times you play great football, the more times you probably win in any way. So it goes hand in hand. You become unlucky a couple of times when you play well and you lose. Yeah. Unless you're a real soft touch, then you're yeah. only worried about what you do with the ball. And you, you have got players who aren't interested in what you do without the ball. And then you play good football, but you just get smashed every week. Well, those teams don't even last two minutes in the Premier League. Exactly. I mean, you look at Bournemouth. Bournemouth played terrific football, but I think over the course that they t- they played in the Premier League, I think they averaged conceding three goals a game, which is actually ridiculous. Um, so it is a bit of be careful what you wish for, wish for with regards to that one. Um, but I mean, I think with Newcastle fans, I mean, there 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 needs to be this. I mean, you're you're trying to pack out a fifty two thousand seat stadium, and there needs to be a sentence of optimism. And Steve Bruce, I think, had the lo- has the lowest percentage win rate in the Premier League history. Um, I believe, or he's in the top the lowest four. So I think when you look at things like that, it doesn't inspire as much confidence. Um, listen, but- listen, not comparing Steve Bruce to Rafa Benitez. Rafa's one of the biggest of if anything in in club football. Uh, and he's a fantastic manager. I'm not questioning his CV. What I'm saying is, you know, the standard of football 
you know, wasn't dramatically different. Yes, we had a towards the end of his reign, um, I think the last 10 games, um, that you know, some of the, they looked like the shackles were, were brought yeah, off. They were, they were really improved. Yeah, and, and, and it, it did improve. And you could see there's been a similar situation to, to this season with the run we've just had in some positive results. So I don't know whether the players feel the shackles come off when when they are then guaranteed to stay in the Premier League and they feel more relaxed to produce their normal performances, that could be levelled. So, you know, hey, there's no debate. There's no debate on 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 um, the stats and, and the CVs of, of, of Rafa and Steve um, at all. I'm just saying that, that you know, Let's not go overboard with what Rafa oh, of done. Course, uh, of course, because yeah. there wasn't a lot of exciting. And also, you know, I know he didn't have a, as much what you, you mentioned that the amount that Steve had, with what Rafa had. Um, you know, Rafa's been one of those coaches that's made huge mistakes in the transfer market as well with some of his signings. So, you know, we have to, um, you know, to, it, it, that's one of the balancing acts as a, as a coach or a manager, getting the recruitment right and getting more signings. Uh, yeah. more positive than I think it's it's all to do with what happens at the top and um, exactly yeah, yeah. Listen, who yeah. knows what Rafa could have achieved if he had had that money and he had an owner that was prepared to and, and, I, and I think any manager I think it's so so difficult I look at how two absolute club legends have been tread by the owner in Shira and Keegan and it tells me that there's no love for the club whatsoever. It's just mm. to finish fourth bottom and happy days, collect the television money every year. Knowing 52,000 are going to come in week in, week out, um, collect that money. Um, I mean, for a, an astute businessman, the biggest thing he ever done was changing the club um, retail services to direct sports direct services because that would have been a massive drop in income because... Mm. You know, Newcastle fans love wearing the replica shirts, love buying the the club stuff. So you know that would that was an that was an issue. But now, listen, getting going off piece a little bit there. But uh, yeah, I just think that um, not not this argument will just keep going round and round and round until the ownership changes. Mm. No, absolutely. It, it's whatever you, whatever you think of Steve Bruce, whether it's you know you think he's a terrific manager, whether you think he's not a terrific manager. Either way, he you know he, it's my gosh, that's the problem. And, and like is like you rightfully said, and nothing will change. Even managers like Rafa Benitez, who come in with the reputation that they've got, still struggled, and that is because that is because of of what Mike Gashti has done for the club, like you rightfully say. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it, you're talking about what Bo- you're talking about what Bournemouth do, and I see what Eddie Eddie Howe's been obviously touted, and Eddie's a terrific young coach. Mm-hmm. But if Eddie tries to play the football, the expansive football that he played at Bournemouth, he might end up getting similar results because is the quality of player there to do it? Do we have the players who can play out from the back? Yeah. Do we have the players who can play through the, the 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 units and the lines of the team, but also be very strong defensively? Um, you know, so th- these are all the us. And, and without any um, investment in the team, it's very difficult um, to do that. Um, without any investment properly in the academy in terms of the facilities and the players, um, you know, how are we going to ca- bring some? fantastic youngsters through so you know it's it all adds up 